1951, Kurosawa received the best film award at Venice for his medieval movie Rashomon. Um, it was a notable achievement. He was the first Japanese director to have received such an award, the first Japanese film to have received such recognition outside Japan. Um, his speech of acceptance was perhaps slightly double-edged. Um, he said a rather interesting thing. He said, everyone likes to receive prizes, and so I'm happy, but I'd be even happier to receive this prize for having shown something of contemporary Japan. Um, well, the following year, he did that, um, embarking on a new film called Ikiru, Living, um, which starred Takashi Shimura as the character Watanabe. Watanabe is a faceless bureaucrat who works in the ministry of such and such in some building in Tokyo. Um, a group of petitioners come to him to ask his help in making a little park in a really polluted and horrible part of town for children to play in. Watanabe is too busy, can't deal with it. Watanabe then finds out that he has cancer and has only a few months to live. So it's an interesting story because here's a character like Kurosawa characters often are, confronted with this extraordinary dilemma, an either or dilemma. Either he can run off and behave frivolously or he can carry on at his job and try and make something of it. Um, and the film deals with how Watanabe comes to terms with his situation and how he manages to do some good. Shimura, uh, Takashi Shimura, I think, is actually Kurosawa's greatest actor and one of the greatest actors of the Japanese cinema. He'd been paired several times previously with Mifune uh, in Drunken Angel, in The Quiet Duel, and in, um, and in Stray Dog. Um, this is the first time that he really gets to run the show on his own. And he's an extraordinary actor, a very gifted actor. Um, Mifune could do one thing extremely well, play a tough guy. Um, but Takashi Shimura could do a number of things extraordinarily well, even down to playing a, a scientist in a Godzilla film. Um, he was a very wide-ranging actor, and I think most people would think of his role as Watanabe in Ikiru as his best work. Kurosawa's theme, and the reason that we like Kurosawa in the West, some people say, is that his theme is individual, individuality, individualism, the importance of the individual, the importance of being yourself and being true to yourself, whatever that is. That's not necessarily a very Japanese theme, and it's certainly not the kind of thing that they drilled into the boy Kurosawa when his father sent him to fencing school or to calligraphy school. Um, it's very important in, in, in Asian culture, I think especially in Japanese culture, that the sort of the group act in unison and that there be a kind of a, a, a group mind, if you like. So everybody gets up and leaves together, everybody comes back together, everybody sits down together. Uh, Watanabe doesn't do that. Watanabe sticks out like that sticking up nail in the Japanese proverb about the sticking up nail is the one that gets hammered down. And throughout the course of Ikiru, Everybody tries to hammer Watanabe down, his fellow bureaucrats, the mafia, the general public, the doctors. Nobody wants him to succeed, and yet succeed he does, at least to a certain extent. The structure of Akira is very interesting because the film really exists in two quite different halves. The first half, with a narrator, is the, the straightforward narration of what happens to Watanabe, you know, at work and when he finds out he's got cancer, what does he do next? The second half of the film, uh, after Watanabe is dead, is The Wake, um, a very long drawn out party which lasts till dawn, um, where everybody first of all arrives, gets drunk, says what a great guy Watanabe was, then bitches about Watanabe and say why he wasn't a great guy and didn't achieve very much, and then by dawn everybody in unison walks out going, we must all be imbued with the spirit of Watanabe and do likewise. And of course the other great thing about Kurosawa is the irony of this because none of them do. Um, Interestingly, in the second half of the thing, there's also a similarity with Rashomon because peppered through the wake are flashbacks, which to a certain extent complement each other, but also to a certain extent contradict each other as everyone presents their version of who Watanabe was and whether or not he did what he set out to achieve and why. Um, it's a sort of, it's an interesting film. It's, it's strange to think that it's supposed to be Steven Spielberg's favorite film because it's really quite pessimistic. Um, yes, there's sentimental music. Yes, Watanabe 
has a swing in the snow and dies in a peaceful way. Um, but basically, it does, it does say that human effort is, is, is pretty much wasted, or at least ignored. Um, and that though Watanabe achieves something, his achievement is, is really downgraded by a whole bunch of people who aren't going to follow in his footsteps. So it's a morally very complicated film. It's far more intelligent than the, than the type of film we're normally invited to watch. And I think it's, it's, it really is a testament to Kurosawa that when he said, you know, at the prize giving for Rashomon, you know, you like this, but I can do better, and I could do much better with a story about contemporary Japan. He was right, and in Ikiru, that's what he did. <laughs>